This is the Realme 9 Pro Plus disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. And on the back side, there's some foam padding. At this point, there are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws have been removed, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen. And then we need to run it along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is made of plastic. There's an antenna flex cable on the top right side. The NFC antenna is located on the top center. And the LED flash is located to the left of the NFC antenna. On the other side, we can see multiple antenna flex cables around the back housing. And there's graphite film to help transfer heat. Before we continue, we need to disconnect the battery cable. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the flex cables. There's graphite film covering the front-facing camera connector that needs to be peeled off. And then the front-facing camera can be disconnected and removed. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front-facing camera. There's a black and white coaxial cable on the right side of the board that needs to be disconnected and removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 50 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top of the board, copper tape over the shields, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. The SIM reader is located on the back, and there's more copper tape on the back shields as well as thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled off, we can see a thermal pad on these chips and some thermal paste on these chips. Once the thermal pad and thermal paste are removed, we have a better look at the processor and the RAM. Moving on to the subboard, there are two flex cables and two coaxial cables which need to be disconnected. At this point, the speaker assembly can be removed. Here's a better look at that. There's some graphite film over the speaker to help transfer heat. And there's mesh filter over the speaker opening. Here's the speaker itself. Now there are two more flex cables which need to be disconnected from the subboard. This flex cable is for the fingerprint reader. There's a plastic bracket holding the subboard in place, so we need to bypass that and remove the subboard. There are rubber gaskets around the connectors on the subboard and the primary microphone is located in between the charger port and the headphone jack. Here's a look at the other side. If you need to replace your screen, you need to remove the back plate and then remove the screws in the back housing and then disconnect the flex cables and remove the speaker assembly and the subboard, giving you access to the flex cable for the screen. At that point, you heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, Reapply your new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the mid-frame, and reassemble the phone. The fingerprint sensor is held down with some adhesive, and the x-axis vibrator motor is located here, and that's also held down with some adhesive. There are also rubber gaskets over the microphone openings, as well as the opening by the flex cable for the screen. So moving on to the battery, there's a pull tab provided to help us pry the battery off.
Here's a better look at the 4500 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery is removed and the adhesive pouch is peeled off, we can see these two flex cables which connect the main board to the subboard. Once this flex cable is peeled off, as well as the protective film underneath, we can see the copper vapor chamber which sits underneath the battery and runs underneath the motherboard. The flex cables for the power button and volume keys are held down with adhesive, so if you need to replace those, you'll have to just gently pry them off. The proximity sensor is located on top, and the earpiece speaker is located next to it and that's also held down with some adhesive. There's also a white liquid damage indicator sticker, which is on the frame underneath the SIM reader. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.